Welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show that looks at the highs and the lows from around world football this weekend. As you can tell, Patrick Van Straat is not here, so I'm joined by my partner in crime from VFN, it's Dave Jackson. How's it going? How's it going, Jack? Younger we gonna... and better looking, some might say. Uh, nobody's saying that. Let's kick it straight off then with the Manchester derby. Oh, Joseph, how are you feeling? I'm gutted, mate. Our first winners, though, I'm going to have to start with Manchester City. What a performance, Dave Jackson. Yes, I think Pep Guardiola got his tactics spot on. And I don't think yeah. that can be underestimated. I think that, 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 that has been, that, like, he literally he set his team up. Yeah. Every single player in that position going from, oh, let's, let's maybe mention the goalkeeper a little bit later, yeah, on. later, later, later. But Every single one of their outfield players, they knew exactly what their job was, yeah. which is something that I, I feel other Premier League managers maybe have um, kind of forgotten about. It, it, it's setting a team up to win a game. It's setting a team up knowing and having trust in your players that, yes, I'm going to back my right back to be better than the opposition's left winger. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did, uh, um, especially in the first... 40 to 46 minutes, or whatever it was, you know, you know, it, it, you're seeing like the bloody first half, they looked, they looked tremendous. Yeah, they were absolutely scintillating first half. You talked about it, hit the nail on the head then, I think, when you say everybody knew exactly yeah. what they were doing. Kevin De Bruyne in particular knew exactly what he was doing. He was finding so much space yeah. in behind Paul Pogba and Fellaini, it was ridiculous. David Silva and Fernandinho wrapped those two up, and then Ke uh, Kevin De Bruyne in the hole. Let's not forget as well, this was a Man City team without Sergio Aguero. Yeah. What would the score have been, Jacko, if they've had Serge? If Sergio Gray would have been on that pitch, that may have been four, five, six in that first half. There's, there's actually a player that I actually want to highlight as well. Raheem Sterling, he, his movement off the ball was yeah. fantastic. And I think that again comes down to Pep Guardiola telling him, take players with you and move Manchester United where you want them to play. And I think that's that's the key element 100%. of why Manchester City uh, won the derby. Yeah, 100%. The amount of times Luke Shaw got pulled out of position yeah. when Raheem Sterling running across the front of him was shocking. However, we are going to have to mention Claudio Bravo. Ooh. Oh, dear me, a sticky debut to say the least. However, he did complete 28 out of his 30 passes, so clearly that's why Pep Guardiola brought him in. Pep Guardiola, of course, after the game as well, said that it was one of the best performances he'd ever seen from a goalkeeper. Uh, clearly, he's just doing that to boost his confidence because <laughs> he was violently bad. He was terrible in the air. His shot stopping didn't look great. And for a debut, a lot of commentators were saying, look, this is reminiscent of David De Gea when he arrived when he was sort of 18, no, I'm 19. Not, I'm not that sure. And it took him two years yeah. to get ready. Well, Claudio Bravo's 33 years of age. He can't afford two years to get ready. So he's got to hit the ground running. It wasn't acceptable on the weekend. I think, I think it's also as well, I think, I think when City play other teams, they will know if you put pressure on this goalkeeper, there is going to be a mistake. Yeah. In. in most other leagues, they don't uh, goalkeepers don't expect balls to be played in from any angle. That's the, that's a yeah. big difference in the Premier League. If people just put a ball in, into the area, and the goalkeeper can't come and claim the ball. He gives his defenders problems. Yeah. And I think. Um, as the season goes on, we'll, we'll kind of see how that kind of pans out. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting against the likes of Crystal Palace. But what do you guys at home think? Are Manchester City the front runners for the league after that result? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our next losers come from the same game. It's Manchester United and Jose Mourinho got it so wrong. There was no pace on the pitch, was there, Dave? I don't think it was. And I think that that was where uh, the big issue was, really. Um, again, I'm, 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 again, I know this is about Man United, but I'm putting my Arsenal hat on. Whenever we have played Pep Guardiola teams, well, the one thing he really hates playing against is pace. It's, it's a massive area that he actually fears. Yeah. You know, say what you want about Theo, Theo with Blake Walcott. Um, his best games come against um, Barcelona, against Pep Guardiola's Barcelona team, against Pep Guardiola's Bayern Munich team, because the way Pep sets his team out, and the reason why he wanted Claudio Bravo over Joe Hart, was that he wants his team to up the pitch, therefore the space to run in behind. I think the big issue um, Jose Mourinho had was by not playing Martial and Marcus Rashford. Yeah. I think in playing in them two positions out wide, you're, you're at Old Trafford, you're at home, you should be taking the game to Man City, yeah. not worrying about what they're going to do to you. You should be going, no, we're at, we are Manchester United, we're going to attack, attack, attack. What's that stupid chant you always do? Yeah, attack, attack, attack. Yeah, I actually, agree with you actually. You know I mean? think, so yeah. if, you're, if you're taking the game to them, and you have your, your again, I'll, I'll, I'll be, take Zlatan out of the equation because he would be in the pitch anyway. He would be speared in your attack. If you had them two wingers pushing the game to Manchester City, like you did the last 20 minutes, yeah. you know, start the game like that. Maybe get, maybe see, maybe, maybe like see if you can nick an early goal. And it changes completely the way that Man City play their game. Completely agree with you, Jackson. United were lacking so much pace in wide areas. And because Henry Mkhitaryan and Jesse Lingard give the ball away so often and did nothing on the ball, it allowed them to get so high at the pitch. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne was in behind Paul Pogba all the time. Paul Pogba didn't know where he's coming or where he's going, didn't know whether to go to David Silva, yeah. sit back on Kevin De Bruyne. That caused us a massive issue. He then found himself out on the left-hand side, trying to cover for Jesse Lingard. 
left us completely exposed in the middle of the park. He had set up completely worried about what Pep Guardiola yes. was going to do yeah. rather than what Manchester United were going to do. He got it wrong on the day, Jose Mourinho. But will he get it wrong this season? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our next winners come for the Bernabeu and it is, of course, Real Madrid who pumped Osasuna 5-2. Zinedine Zidane taking his win streak to 15 games with Real Madrid. Seriously scary stuff. Isn't That's they? right. Real Madrid have their fear factor back. I'm not saying, you know, if any, any team that the champions of Europe that are a club of Real Madrid's stature, there's always going to be a fear there. But I think teams go to the Bernabeu now and think, OK, let's, let's not get a spanking. If we can, if we can come away with a 2-0 loss, that's been a good day's work. And I don't think it's been like that for an awful long time. Yeah, an awful long time. If you can hear some banging in the background, that's Jose Mourinho whacking his head against the door. He's still annoyed. Sorry about the noise. Nothing we can do about it. <laughs> I agree with you, though, Dave. Real Madrid look a seriously scary prospect. Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, coming back from Euro 2016 yeah. in, uh, injury. Since he joined the club seven years ago, he has scored 35% of Real Madrid's goals. That's that ridiculous. is absolutely ridiculous. monstrous. They've also got Gareth Bell. He looks on fire this season. Benzema, they've got the likes of Morata. They're so fluid, Real Madrid. They're a real problem for Barcelona this season. They yeah. can play in about four different formations, which I don't think Barcelona can. I think I think that's a point I was about to make. It's like Real Madrid have a couple of systems that they can play. Yeah. But whereas with Barcelona, if, if it doesn't work, um, you know, quick, quick, quick short, 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 short passing. They, they kind of, you know, they, they, for example, they don't really have a big man or they don't really have somebody who can potentially stretch the fence the way yeah. the Real Madrid can, you know. If, for example, it's not quite going around Madrid's way, they can go, all right, Bell, you just piss off to the wing, you, sh you stretch, stretch the play, the put Chris Ronaldo on the other wing, and you've got two excellent, excellent strikers there yeah. in Karim Benzema and uh, Morata. Just whip some bloody balls in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they've also got the extra creativity on the bench. Hammers Rodriguez can't get a game. That sums it up. Isco Crazy. can't get a game. They've got Modric, Cruz in central midfield. Yeah. Casemiro behind them. Very, very exciting and, and daunting stuff. And I think also, and I, you know, I, I think Real Madrid's defence doesn't quite get the kind of credit it probably yeah. does actually deserve. Pepe and Sergio Ramos again. They they would pr they would pretty much walk into any any like team. Yeah. You saw how good Pepe like, was yeah. at the Euros, of course, with Portugal easily the best defender in the competition. Maybe even the player of the tournament. Amazing performance there. Going to be very close between them yeah. and Barcelona, but what do you guys at, uh, at home think? Who's going to win La Liga? Is it going to be the Catalan or is it going to be Real Madrid? Let us know. Talking of the Catalans, Davo, they are our next losers. They lost 2-1 at home to newly promoted Alaves. Ugly times for Luis Enrique. I, th I don't think anyone saw that coming. No, dearie me. Mm. Massive odds. However, what can you say about that system? He left Messi on the bench, didn't he? He left Iniesta, he left Suarez on the bench. The people he bought in, not quite ready. Well, I think that's the thing. Their first 11, their first 11 is, is probably the best on the planet. Yeah. Okay, you know, I think everyone, you know, you know, there's other teams there. You've got your Bayerns, you've got your Real Madrid, etc. The problem is their strength and depth is no, it's just not there. I, despite that, I think they've actually brought well. I think the biggest issue that Luis Enrique is going to have is he's brought for the future. So he's kind of relying on their their starting eleven to just do the, just to just do like the job for them. Yeah. For you're probably thinking about 60 to 65 games a season if they want to win the league and the Champions League. I think that was the issue that they messed up towards about March time last season. They almost even people forget they almost threw that title away as well. Yeah, I agree with you. The likes of Mtiti being left on the bench is worrying for me that Matteo yeah. is being played ahead of him because Matteo is absolute dog shit. <laughs> and I'm also worried about Arda Turan and Paco Alcácer. They're not hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the comments a couple of weeks ago said, well, Chiran had a fantastic pre-season. He should be ready to step up. He's nowhere near the level of Barcelona's usual front three. So to leave Messi and Suarez on the bench, a massive risk. And like you said, if they're going to play 60 uh, games a season, that front three yeah. simply can't do it. Barcelona had 75% possession on the weekend, but they only had two shots on target. That's not good. Alaves had four. At home two shots well. on target at home is worrying. That's why they cannot afford to drop Messi and Suarez, despite the fact that Alcacer and Tour are fantastic players. They're still miles off Messi. And I think that's another issue as well. They only know how to play one way. Yeah. You know, and when it works, as I say, I generally believe I think they're, I think they're the best club team on, on, on the planet. But if it doesn't, you know, if, it, if a team it just has got a bit between their teeth of their playing, they think, no, we are not going to be broken down today. You know, they're kind of relying on Messi, Suarez, or Neymar to do a little, to, to do a little bit, a little bit like special. You know, pull, pull like something out of the top drawer kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And with a recent poll of Catalans saying that eighty-seven percent of them expect the treble. Yes, the treble this pressure. season. Pressure. The pressure is massive. But have they got enough to battle in the Copa del Rey, the La Liga, and the Champions League? I'm not convinced. But what are you guys saying? Do you think they can win the treble? No way.
The next winners, it really pains me to say it, it is Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp who thumped Leicester 4-1 at home at the newly redeveloped Anfield. Great performance, great result. Dave. It was amazing. I, I think Mane looks like he could be the sign of the, of the, the season, in, yeah. uh, particularly in the Premier League. He, he, he's so direct. When you have a player that takes opposition players with them, it creates space for other people. Yeah. And again, it's something that I, I keep banging about Theo, Theo, Theo Bloody Walcott this week, but he's the most fresh because he doesn't take players with him. Yeah. Like that, that is a fundamental part of football. It's not just about what you do with the ball, it's about what you do without it. And yeah, I think that good. that is the, the biggest thing that I think um, Jürgen Klopp has managed to do to this Liverpool team. They're so fluid. They're so you know, fluid. With they've, and without the ball. They've scored more Premier League goals than anybody else yeah. since the turn of the year. I think that sums it up. Like you say, Manny pulling players away. Adam Lallana. I had a real problem with Adam Lallana last season. I was not his biggest fan. That's an understatement. Because he's fantastic on the ball. He's got yeah. great technical ability. But he doesn't finish enough chances yeah. and he doesn't get enough assists. But this season... Jurgen Klopp's getting the best out of him, isn't he? He scored three goals and got an assist in his last four games for yeah. club and country. That is impressive. He also covered more ground than anybody yeah. else in the Premier League this season on the weekend. 13.2 kilometres. Amazing stuff around Lallana. If you can get him combining with Firmino, Mane running in behind, even the likes of Vijnaldum coming from deep. Yeah. He's got Coutinho on the bench. He's got Daniel Sturridge yet to start firing. Liverpool are a seriously dangerous side. You know, I, I think I think they're going to be a very extremely tough team to beat. Yeah, definitely. But where are Liverpool going to finish in the league? Can they win the title or should they be aiming for a top four finish? That seems more likely to me. Let us know what you think below. Our next losers come from the new London Stadium. It is West Ham, who yet again shambles. Went 2-0 up, Dave, and lost 4-2 to Watford. I don't understand how you can um, go 2-0 up at home and lose the game, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Don't, and you want to see if like Watford played amazing. Let's have it right. There was, there was literally, I think it was like four defensive errors. Yeah. That could cost them the game. Troy Deeney's finish though. Troy oh. Deeney's finish is an absolute hey, that is a world day. Day. If you haven't seen it already, Troy Deeney. I, I tell you something now. If that time would have scored that goal, that, that yeah. that's that, that that's like blockbuster headline. Hundred percent. But I mean. West Ham were horrible on the day. The newly formed London Stadium as well looks doesn't look fit for purpose. There's still stewarding problems with fighting between West Ham fans. If you're in the lower seats, you have to stand the whole game to see the pitch. Unacceptable. They weren't going to pack it out. And that atmosphere carried onto the pitch. Yes, when they shipped yes. two goals, the whole atmosphere went flat. You couldn't hit yeah. anything in the stadium. The players got nervous and Watford took full advantage. Taking nothing away from them, they were powerful on the day. Igalo and Dini back to goal scoring ways. Etienne Capu scoring from deep. That worries me as a West Ham fan that you're going to have to ship that many goals four at home to Watford. Yes, and I think also with that, the, the way the way the way it looks at like West Ham have to play, they're literally going to have to score more goals in your position. Yeah, literally. You know? And I think if Dimitri Payet gets injured, they're in serious trouble. Serious trouble. Of course, you would probably seen that Dimitri Payet Rabona. Disgusting. Wonderful stuff. That is pure, unadulterated filth, Dimitri. <laughs> However, the attack. Fine, the defence, shambles. They've still got Arbaloa to come back in, they've still got Ogbonna to come back in, so that might shore them up a bit. However, overall, it's a defensive system. They're all over the place. They look a completely different team to last season. Their right backs are pushing two out of the pitch, left backs not yeah. following the left winger. You've got Mikel Antonio, who's now gone from a right back to a left winger. The right back area is still a problem for him. That's why he's brought an Arbaloa, but Arbaloa is still not fit enough. Slavon Bilic as well in trouble. That's two wins from his last eight games, and those two wins was that scraper against Bournemouth and a winning the Europa League against yeah. NK Domzel, which they later went out of. So not a great start to the season for Slavon Bilic. But how long is he going to last? Could he be one of the first casualties? Or is the likes of Mark Hughes and Tony Pulis pushing him pretty damn close? Who's going to be sacked first? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So that was our weekend's winners and losers. But who are yours? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, we're going to check out Football Face Off featuring our friends over at All Time Game. It's played on screen now. FIFA 17 versus Pro Evolution 17. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And as ever, please do like and subscribe. Peace.